Hello everyone and welcome to a new span of lecture in the topic of myocardial ischemia and today we are speaking about a strange title which is called TA wave. I think many of you didn't hear about this title. For me, I have learned about this recently. So what's TA wave and what's meant by TA wave in ECG? That's what we are going to learn today as we are going to understand the explanation of the TA wave in ECG and what's its clinical significance. So let's remind ourselves with the basics. We know, of course, that P wave represents the atrial depolarization. Then we have the complex, which represents ventricular depolarization. And we have the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. So these three waves represent the electrical activity inside the heart that results in the mechanical activity. And of course, there was a common question that we were asked about ourselves when we were undergrad student learning about ECG for the first time. Where is the signal of atrial repolarization, please? Of course, if the atrium is depolarized, it should be followed by a phase of repolarization. The answer was simple. Just it is masked inside the QRS complex because the atrial repolarization occurs simultaneously with ventricular depolarization. And so, of course, it is obscured by the complex. Let's omit this answer for a while and explain it in depth because that's what we are going to do today in this video. We don't have only these three waves as we also have another wave representing atrial repolarization called TA wave. TA wave is called by this name because it is like the T wave of the atrium. If the T wave represents ventricular repolarization so t wave of the atrium is a wave representing atrial repolarization so it is t standing for t wave and a standing for the atrium and it can be written in another way with the a letter written as a subscript so both ways of writing ta waves are right so it is a surprise for many of us that we are having TA wave and so many of us now have many questions so please all of you tell me now to be patient so I would present this lecture in a form of questions and answers the first question that of course all of us ask now why can't we see this wave in normal sinus rhythm the answer is simple TA wave is usually not seen in ECG as it has a low amplitude of about 100 to 200 microvolt and usually it is concealed within the QRS complex as the ventricular depolarization normally begins before it repolarization ends so it appears nearly in the PR segment and then blending with the complex and usually it terminates after the complex the second question when can we see it in 2 to 1 AV block, every second P wave is not followed by a complex. And in 3 to 1 or 0 degree, I'm sorry, AV block, complexes are dissociated from P waves. So many P waves are not followed directly by complex. So in this case, TA wave can be seen. And here it can follow the P wave because it is not followed directly by a complex. And TA wave were first described by Spragital in 1925 in patients with 3rd degree AV block. So of course, all of us ask now, what about the duration? What about the polarity? We are going to answer this in the next questions. Regarding the polarity, TA wave is always opposite to the P wave in contrast to the role applied in the ventricle in which the QRS complex and T wave have the same polarity as we learned before in the lecture of T wave inversion. So T wave is always opposite to the P wave. And what about the duration? It's about an average of 320 milliseconds starting after the P wave. And so it's about twice or triple the P wave duration. So if it is opposite to the P wave and has twice or triple the duration, it can have this appearance here. As this patient had in this ECG lead a positive P wave, so it would be negative and twice or triple the duration of the normal P waves. So we have another terminology based on the TA wave, which is the PTA interval. PTA interval is a time interval from the onset of the P wave to the end of TA wave with an average of about 440 milliseconds and is variable with heart rate. And so it has the same idea as QT interval. If QT interval represents ventricular depolarization and repolarization, 
PTA interval represents atrial depolarization and repolarization. So it is different from the PR interval and PR segment. PTA interval so represents the wave or the time interval from the start of the P wave to the end of the T E wave and QT interval represents the time interval from the start of complex to the end of T wave. So let's summarize again. PR interval is from the start of P wave to the start of the complex. PR segment from the end of the P wave to the start of the complex. And PTA interval is from the start of the P wave to the end of TA wave. Let's come to the fifth question. Where can we see it on ECG regarding its timing? Mostly it is masked by the QRS complex as it nearly occurs simultaneously, but it can extend beyond it due to longer duration of the T E wave than the P wave, which is twice or triple. So it nearly starts before the complex and ends after the complex, but due to its low voltage, it doesn't usually appear. If there is a normal ventricular conduction with NAR complex, the TA wave can be present at about 180 milliseconds after the end of the complex. But if the patient has complete boundary branch block with white complex more than 120 milliseconds, T wave may still be present at about 140 milliseconds after the end of the complex and may end before the end of the complex with longer complex duration. If there is short PR interval here, it is a very important situation for the TA wave because in this case the complex starts and ends earlier and so the TA wave is relatively shifted towards the ST segment and T wave blending with them. So in this case, because it superimposes the ST segment, it leads to the false appearance of ST segment depression. So it results in apparent ST depression, which is not real. The ST segment is actually isoelectric, but due to the TA wave, it has the appearance of ST depression. And here comes the clinical significance of TA wave. In case of short PR interval, as in sinus tachycardia, the TA wave blends with the ST segment, leading to apparent ST segment depression, which can be misdiagnosed as myocardial ischemia as part of non-ST elevation, acute coronary syndrome, although it is just TA wave. And TA wave can blend with both PR segment and ST segment, not only with ST segment, leading to apparent PR segment and ST segment depression so here is a confusing situation of course caused by that ta wave another clinical situation that causes confusion in case of ectopic low atrial rhythm which represent a rhythm originating from the low foc or a low focus inside the atrium resulting in positive p waves in p avr and negative p waves into three and avf so in this case, the patient is having low atrial ectopic rhythm, retrograde atrial activation resulting in inverted P waves and inferior leads, and by conclusion, TA waves would be positive, but exaggerated positive in this situation due to the low atrial rhythm, extending into ST segment in inferior leads, resulting in false appearance of ST segment elevation. So here the patient is having apparent ST elevations and inferior leads just caused by the positive T waves caused by the low atrial rhythm. So the TA wave may occur nearly simultaneous with the complex. Sometimes with short PR interval may appear after the complex fused with the ST segment resulting in apparent ST deviation and it can occur directly after the P wave if there is no following complex like in AV blocks. So the TA timing in ECG is variable and so it depends on many variables like heart rate, PR interval value, QT interval and complex duration. In a case report published in 2018 regarding atrial repolarization waves mimicking inferior wall STEMI, there was a patient of about 72 year old and this patient was having low ectopic atrial rhythm represented by negative P waves in inferior leads and positive in AVR, but there was apparent ST elevation in the inferior leads, giving the appearance of inferior STEMI. The problem is that the patient was having serial negative troponin and his echocardiography didn't show any resting segmental motion abnormalities. And so, the patient was having apparent ST elevation just with the ectopic low rhythm. 
when he had another ECG after he restored sinus rhythm, represented by the positive P waves and if you release a negative APR, so the axis of the P wave here is completely different from the first ECG, the ST segment resolved. So is the restoration of ST segment, the ST restoration of sinus rhythm, I'm sorry, the ST segment returned to be isoelectric. So this explains a lot. In the first ECG, it was not ST elevation, it was just positive T waves blending with the ST segment leading to apparent ST segment elevation, not inferior STEMI. It is only TA waves superimposed on them. So this is one of the confusing clinical situations caused by the TA waves. Another situation that represents significance for the TA waves is the stress ECG. With the exercise induced sinus tachycardia, the patient develops increasing P and TA waves magnitude together with shortening of the PR interval. So this results in shifting of the magnified TA wave into the ST segment resulting in pseudo depression of the ST segment during exercise leading to false positive stress ECG. So the patient may have appearance of ST segment depression with an exercise test, but actually they are just TA waves blending with the ST segment due to sinus tachycardia, not caused by exercise induced ST depression. So the clinical significance of TA waves is causing confusion with ST segment deviation in resting and stress ECG. The same idea as the memory T waves in ECG, which of course gives an impression of myocardial ischemia, but just the normal variant, or the false tendon of left ventricle in echocardiography, which gives a false appearance of presence of a mass for thrombus, but it is just normal variant. So TA waves are just normal variants that make confusion. The last question in our lecture today, can TA waves be revealed more clearly during normal sinus rhythm? Yes, of course, there is a way called the modified limb bleeds, in which they ch change the positions of the limb bleeds, but we leave the precordial lead at the same positions. So the right arm electrode is put in the third right intercostal space to the left of the McLevicker line. The left arm electrode in the fifth right intercostal space slightly to the right of the McLevicker line left leg electrode in the right left intercostal space on the mid clavicular line and the right leg on the right ankle as usual and precordial leads as usual. This result in change in the axis and magnification of the P waves and TE waves. So in an article published in 2014 by Severman et al. regarding unmasking of atrial repolarization waves using simple modified limb lead system, in this case, the modification of the position of limb leads resulting in magnification of the amplitude of P waves and of course the opposite to them TA waves with the reduction of amplitude of the complex so they were more clearly seen. So what they did actually, that they increased the amplitude of the P wave and the TA wave, which is opposite to the P wave and the reduction of the complex. So here, in normal sinus rhythm with this method, the modified limb leads, the TA waves are more clearly seen. So remember, atrial repolarization waves mimicking myocardial ischemia, of course, should be diagnoses of exclusion. Although they make confusion, of course, but in most of the cases, non-invasive or even invasive coronary angiography may be necessary to exclude myocardial ischemia before assuming that this ST deviation, either elevation or depression, is just caused by TA waves. Because, of course, myocardial ischemia is a high-risk disease that needs to be excluded by 100% before assuming that it is just normal variant caused by TA waves. So, as the end of this short span of lecture, but of course it's very interesting and new lecture, we understood today how to diagnose TA wave in ECG, and what is the clinical significance, and why sometimes it may cause confusion in diagnosis of myocardial ischemia, and our take home message today is that TA wave is an unrecognizable wave in ECG, but its significance appears in confusing clinical situation as one of the differential diagnoses. Thank you very much for your watching.